because we answer the question, what's bigger news, a theme park in LA or expansion in Orlando? This is MuggleCast episode 246 for December 9th, 2011. This week's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash MuggleCast. Welcome to MuggleCast episode 246. This is a very special episode recorded late at night. In December, a cold winter's night. Um, we're here to discuss the big Wizarding World news that was made earlier this week. Eric, Micah, and I are here. Hello, excited gentlemen. Yes, hello. I thought you were going to cue that song by the Counting Crows when you. What's uh, that song? Long December. When you were oh, making that comment earlier. Da, ba, da, mm. da, 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 da. Yeah, got it. I don't follow them. I don't know what uh, Eric's doing, but that sounds that was, like I think that was, You know what? I confuse I confuse Counting Crows and Collective Soul. That's that's my bad. Mm. That's my flaw. No, right. That's okay. For the world to see. Well, we are going to talk about the Wizarding World. There's a lot to talk about. Of course, L.A. and also Orlando. You know, it's a it's a uh, it's a, it's a it's a, it's a tra- transition time for the Wizarding World Orlando and. A creation time for Wizarding World. I think LA. we're going to have some interesting discussion about this because I think the big question is going to be: Is it bigger news that the one in Orlando is expanding, or that there's one coming to Los Angeles? Right. Ooh, which is which is hotter question on this cold winter's night? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's not where Andrew is. Uh, while well, yeah, it's kind of chilly here. Um, we'll ponder that while we get through some other news. First, Micah, tell us what else has been going on that's worth discussing. There's been a lot of stuff, but it's a lot of crap. Well, let's start with uh, Pottermore. And uh, I'm going to try, because it, because it is late at night and, uh, you know, uh, I'm not as you hyped up. Out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little bit a little bit mellow here. Uh, they, they put out a release earlier in the week, a blog post. Actually, I think it might have been even over the weekend. Uh, about the fact that they are going to be down for a period of time. And this has got to be somewhat disconcerting news to people who are still new to the site. Maybe they're just getting acquainted with it. Uh, more so to the people who are not beta testers. Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of emails from people who say, you know, I was away over the summer. I came back hoping that in October, I was going to be able to access Pottermore as a new user because I didn't get a chance to get in during the beta period. And now I'm going to the site and it's down and I can't even register and I'm, I can't even get access probably until sometime next year. I just want to know what is going on with this site. You know, what changes are they possibly making to it? And, and why hasn't it come online fully yet? It's, it's, it's very frustrating for a lot of people out there. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems like there's just server problems. I mean, that seems to be the clearest issue. And we know when it launched, it was it was down frequently. Um, we were getting that that purple message of death, so to speak. The Pottermore is unavailable. Please come try again yeah. later. And uh, I think that's what they're fixing. Yeah, and according, it's not your, they're not adding. No, features. yeah, according to the release, it says the work we're carrying out is technical, so there won't be many obvious differences to the site. But to help us test our work, we really would like you to log in and explore the site once it's back online. So I think it's clear that they're actually, like, they are testing, um, they're improving the capacity of the site. Maybe it's load time, maybe it's, you know, how many people can be on at once, because, and, you know, about people being disappointed that it's not up yet, I stated before, like, okay, take it down as long as you need to, but once you launch it, don't fail again. You know, once you launch it, make it make sure it's strong before you launch it. And then there won't be any of these problems that we keep seeing or purple screens or any more of this downtime that's that's, you know, jarring and disappointing. And yeah. here's the thing though, it is gonna be down for a week and it it first went down as scheduled on December the third and so probably till at least the tenth, if not to the beginning of next week. But with all of the work that's been going on on this site, 
and the fact that it's not going to officially open till sometime in 2012, when they open, are they just going to open with Sorcerer's Stone, or are they going to include Chamber of Secrets? How are they going to work this out? Because you have a lot of people now who have been in the beta period for several months who are going to be eager to get a new book when the site officially opens and not go through the whole experience all over again with Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, I mean, they have to have a big relaunch. I think their safest bet may be to just throw some extra material from J.K. Rowling in there, from Sorcerer's I Stone. I, and the, because, yeah. because Chamber of Secrets will take too long to develop. I mean, there's artwork, there's all that content, you know, the, the, the code has to be written. That's a huge amount of stuff. So at least if they added J.K. Rowling stuff, maybe that could be a little easier. So, I don't know so if like it is. So keep the same moments, like obviously, but yeah, yeah. just add stuff, yeah. Add stuff yeah, and I, I haven't yeah. really, honestly, I haven't completed the Pottermore yet. So, like for Sorcerer Stone mm-hmm. from the beta. Yeah, I don't know if I have either. Thing. So I'm, I'm ex- I mean, I'm still kind of excited to to get to the later chapters. And and mm-hmm. one final thing I just wanted to add about this because I know we do get a lot of emails. We're not trying to bash Pottermore. There are a lot of good things about it, but I just think the way that it's come across so far has been less than enjoyable for a lot of people. It's, uh, great things about Pottermore. I'll list them. Number one, it makes a good paperweight. Uh, two, if you're <laughs> if you're really, really bored uh, to tears, um, you can't no, even wipe your tears. Oh, no. Okay. Be fair. I, it's, it, I think a real list would be it, the new content is great. It's nice to see this very in-depth website from J.K. Rowling. I, and actually, you know, my my list doesn't go very far. <laughs> but look, um, it's nice to be sorted. Yeah, I think I think we're all genuinely, as fans of the Harry Potter series, we are genuinely excited to see this in a position where it succeeds. Um, yeah, so sure. we're all excited to see them. This team who continues to bring them down, it's actually a good thing because it shows that they're still working on perfecting it. And uh, yeah, it's just it's comforting somewhere knowing there's a team behind this that are caring about you know, the site continuing and doing, right. doing they just want to make it do what they said it was going to do. And, uh, mm-hmm. it's, that's very, very good on them. All right. What else is going on in the news? Well, a little bit of, uh, auction news. If people are interested in bidding this holiday season for some interesting, uh, Harry Potter gifts, 500,000 pounds, 500,000. Do I have to 500,000? Yeah, exactly. Do I have 500,000? Do I hear 10,000? 10,000. I don't have 500,000. So, I would not be able to purchase. Uh, but it initially started off the, the report that uh, Sotheby's was going to be auctioning off a very rare deluxe first edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And now that whole auction platform has expanded to include more than just that book. So there's multiple books that are available, uh, including a complete set of deluxe Harry Potter volumes, the first four, so I guess Sorcerer's Stone through Goblet of Fire, signed by J.K. Rowling, uh, and I'm assuming that the proceeds are going to charity, uh, but I'm not seeing that anywhere in the post that I'm reading right now. Um, this deluxe edition, I've never really... Hmm. I don't think I've ever seen this art before anywhere. Yeah, well, the, the the cool thing about it is that it's the first edition, too. It's a first deluxe oh, wow. edition. Wow. And all this artwork is from the original illustrator, and it's just... It's pretty beautiful. It's great. It's really great. Um, and the artwork is just fun to look at because, you know, it is really the first interpretation of Harry Potter, of, of Joe's story, uh, way before the movies came along, as were several of the U.S. and U.K. books. But, you know, this is just really special uh, set. So currently it's going for, oh, 30 to 50,000 pounds. Um, and that's the estimate, The right? estimate yeah. for the deluxe edition of Philosopher's Stone. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, the final bit of news, uh, there was a recent article uh, that Deathly Hallows Part 2 may have taken one step closer to being nominated for Best Picture because the National Board of Review named the final installment in the Potter film series one of the top ten films of 2011. Now, the National Board of Review is often looked at as a prelude to the Oscars. So, it this whole uh, Oscar uh, push is starting to gain, gain a little bit of steam for uh, for Deathly Hallows Part 2, and I'm sure it's not going to stop. It's just going to keep on going all the way until one of the awards, uh, February, March. Are they February, Andrew? Do you know? Oscars. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. they were too. Did I make mm-hmm. that up? Or February or January. Something like that. But yeah, it's soon. 
Um, and uh, David Yates, David Heyman, David Barron, and Helena Bonham Carter were actually in L.A. for a couple of things. They were here for a BAFTA ceremony, um, which they attended. But also something that I attended was a Deathly Hallows Part Two screening held by Variety, which is a big trade publication in Hollywood. And it was the screening of the film, of course. And then a Q&A afterwards. And those three, uh, uh, the three Davids plus Helena... Uh, spoke, answered questions from the audience, and it was really a nice time. And Helena is just so funny; <laughs> like she is just on fire. What did she um, look like? And the, I mean, this time because oh, she looked like her oh, normal okay. self. I mean, she wasn't dressed as Bella or anything, <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, that was just another example of a way that they're being very, um, you know, it's it's kind of a, a, another little Oscar. Yeah, push. because it's, they have this presence in L.A. now that they're building. Um, yeah, right. And the, you know, the billboards everywhere. It's a good, good transition so. into our top news story. Well, then. Just to, uh, make note there that the Oscars are Sunday, February 26th. I looked it's it the up. The end of February. Oh. Okay. And, uh, they, they've changed host a couple of times. Who's hosting now? Does it say? Billy Crystal, right? I thought it was, but then I heard that somebody else yeah. was doing it instead. No, no, no. It was first Eddie yes, Murphy. Yes, that's what I heard. And then, and then Billy Crystal took over because Eddie Murphy bailed out because of drama with the producer uh, and all this. Yeah, I, I have that um, that Rolling Stone magazine with Eddie Murphy on the front, and I read the whole. Billy Crystal's the man. Billy Crystal is the man. Well, he's tried and tested too. Um, yeah, he's done Oscars. He went to my high school. Nice. Yes. That's okay, a little so Muggle Cast Nugget. For you. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully he'll give you a shout out. Shout out at the Oscars. <laughs> I doubt it. All right, before we continue with today's news, we'd like to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than, get this, 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature and featuring audio versions of many New York Times bestsellers. For listeners of this podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their great service. One audiobook to consider is Inheritance. Book four in the Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Pellini. It was just released, and those of you who are big Aragon fans will not want to miss the fourth and final book in the series. It's the much-anticipated, astonishing conclusion to the worldwide best-selling Inheritance Cycle. So, to get Inheritance or any other book of your choice, visit audiblepodcast.com slash mugglecast. Again, that's audiblepodcast.com slash mugglecast. And we thank Audible for supporting the show. Now it's time to talk about, of course, the big story. Wizarding World, Harry Potter coming to Los Angeles. Now, does anybody remember when these rumors started? I'm not talking about like a couple weeks ago, but like, I mean, there there was never really any concrete info about the Wizarding World possibly coming to Los no, Angeles. No, no, it, it was definitely out of I the remember. blue. I remember, um, I mean, there were plenty yeah. of talks of it being overseas. You know, the mayor of London a couple of years back said it should. Then there was this, the, the, the rights to, to have a ride were being considered in like India or, or somewhere to like have a single Harry Potter attraction there. But I mean, I think from the outset, you know, it was, we always talked about it on a muggle cast. But as I recall, I mean, one of your concerns, Andrew, having, you know, living in LA was the size of the park that it might not be feasible to really do one because uh, I believe you had mentioned that Universal Studios Hollywood is quite cramped. Yeah, and it's kind of in in a in a hilly area, so that kind of hinders the amount of space they can work with too. Um, but uh, last week, the Wall Street Journal broke the news that uh, Wizarding World Park was going to be announced by Universal and Warner Brothers. They were closing in on a deal. Interestingly, Disneyland was also in talks to be getting the park, which just blew my <laughs> mind because I couldn't believe. That Disney would a make the same mistake twice by not you know winning <laughs> winning over Universal, but then also just um you know that that Warner would step away from Universal and say hey Disney it's time for you to have a go right. at this, uh, but I think it was ultimately for the best. I imagine they would have had to make some big changes if it were to be in <sighs> Disney because Disney would have wanted creative control. Yeah, they would have had to have. I'm, like I'm, I would have to think Universal owns rights to a lot of this. You're stuff right. As they well. would have had to have like all different merchandise, like compl- yeah. Well, so it just yeah. wouldn't have worked. Mickey already has a wizard costume though, doesn't he? Right. Yeah, he could have been ah uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. They didn't need Dan Radcliffe. They yeah. could just use. So that didn't work out, but that's fine. I think Universal doing the second park had to be done. Um. Um. 
uh, let's see. And then, so, uh, I guess we'll run through the details first. Yeah. What we know so far. Which we don't is, know much. Yeah, very minimal. What, I was what happened say. today? Because you were, you were at the park this morning, right? Yes, I was at the park, which, you know, I was thrilled to be able to go to because it, it's literally 20 minutes from my apartment. So it's like, oh, wow, this is like, you know, a few years I'll be able Get to butter b- bounce over there whenever yeah. I want. Yeah, exactly. Who knew Hogwarts was right down the road from you all this time? Andy. I know, all this time. I used to be excited about the Hollywood sign. Now Those I'm- people who did Finding Hogwarts, all they had to do was <laughs> come and visit <laughs> you. To travel abroad. Yeah. Um, uh, so what we do know, you know, we know little, but we actually know a lot because the park is supposed to be very similar to what's in Orlando right now. So that tells us a lot. There's going to be the Hogwarts castle. There's going to be forbidden journey. There's going to be rides and shops. There's going to be cramped entryways and exit ways. And <laughs> people are going to get annoyed. That's the thing. Um, and I don't want to cut you off here, but I mean, remember in Florida, like there were four hour lines to get into the park and those lines were the length of the park. So if Universal Studios yeah. Hollywood is smaller than Islands of Adventure in Florida, we're going to have some serious trouble. Not to mention there's more people no. in yeah. L.A. than there are in Orlando. Well, well, Can I ask a somewhat stupid question? Is Okay. Does Universal Studios Hollywood have an Islands of Adventure section, or is that exclusive to Orlando? That's exclusive, yeah. So let's talk about where they're going to build it. This, in, this info actually did come out today, not from Universal during their event. Um, but when, uh, the Washington Post was talking to a couple of Universal people afterwards, um, Universal President, uh, I don't have his first name, Meyer, said, we're not landlocked in response to, oh, do you have room to build this? He said, we're on 400 acres on this lot and 200 of them are still not developed. Okay, so that's pretty big. And I mean, if you look at it on Google Earth, you, We'll be hard pressed to find 200 acres of land or or half of a park um, <laughs> available. So I don't know totally what I he's think he talking means the about. But lot. they're gonna have people like commuting. But the, uh, yeah, I guess I I don't know. But anyway, he goes. Um, the L.A. County supervisor chimed in as well. He said they're gonna be knocking out the Gibson Amp- Amphitheater. And the Gibson Amphitheater is right next to Universal. It's kind of attached to it, actually, but you can't really just walk up to it. You have to go through separate gates. And um, I actually made a whole map on Hypable because I'm, like, obsessed with all this <laughs> news. And so th- that does take up a good chunk. So if they were to cut that out, and the Gibson Amphitheater is very old. Even though they still hold events there, they most recently um, hosted the MTV Movie Awards oh. there. So it's still used for big events. Um, so they'll knock the Gibson Amphitheater out and they'll have all that room behind it because behind the Gibson Theater, Amphitheater is really nothing. Just a lot of universal backstage stuff. So it's actually a cool plan and it, it, it'll definitely work, I think. Um, and you can even see some undeveloped land right behind it. So maybe that was part of what he was referring to. Yes. But yeah, I'm feeling good about the size thing now, now that, now that he's, answered that question. Yeah, the LA Times had their list of questions actually earlier in the week. Their first question was where will the, or the second one was where will the land be located? Um, yeah. And they did, I mean, in at the event today, they had said it will be within the existing universal property. So that put to rest immediately, you know, are they going to build this elsewhere? Yeah, well, here's the big question I have about this. It's going to be essentially a replica of what exists in Orlando, other than for convenience for people who live in Los Angeles or California proper, I guess, and and sort of everybody that's closer to the West Coast. What's the draw there versus going to Orlando, especially with the news that the Orlando Park is going to be expanding and have more to offer than what's in Los Angeles? Yeah. Well, you know, one thing to keep in mind is, and this may be a stretch, but for all we know, the Orlando expansion, whatever they're planning for that, could also be put into Hollywood. That's true. We don't know for sure. Um, or they could have at least one extra ride. That's what so, I'm saying. I'd like to see something yeah. that's different about Los Angeles that's going to yeah, I agree. offer I mean, historically, people. do historically don't they actually just duplicate the rides, though? Like, I think if, I mean, because yeah. Terminator 2 3D is in Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's actually right where the event was today. Oh, yeah. okay. Cause <laughs> right outside of it. On the LA Times site, it says that that's actually due to be torn down, like, contractually. Um, 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, but things like that, you know, the rides are more or less the same, but, but, you know, they work, they still both work because they're on opposite coasts. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing. They are on opposites, co- opposite coasts. So let's say if you live anywhere in the Midwest, even anywhere in the Western half of the country, I would assume you would probably more, be more inclined to go to LA for the Wizarding World. I mean, and you have other attraction or theme parks here as well. You got Six Flags. You do have Disney. Yeah. You have Knots. I mean, there's quite a few. Sea World. It's true, and and absolutely. You know, if you're in town or in the state for something like Comic Con or VidCon or you know mm-hmm. any of those, and you want to VidCon, <laughs> go by and and see the Wizarding World, then you don't have to go to the other side of the country to do it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was also going to throw in there, it might be a bit of a stretch, but I really don't think it is. People from Japan, people from Australia, it's oh, a lot yeah. easier to Hawaii. go to Los Angeles exactly than, it is, than it is to go to yeah, uh, Orlando. And we, and we can't remember, we can't forget, it's not like everybody in the world's been to Universal Orlando to go to the Wizarding World. So there's going to be. Although waiting a, in line, it would seem like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, there's going to be an incredible amount of people. Who will be inclined to go just because it is in Hollywood, and they won't be making that decision. They'll they'll just say, "Oh, it's in Hollywood." A lot of people can road trip. I mean, you know, it's just a simple ride through the desert for most people if they're outside of L.A. Right. So now the other thing about L.A., of course, is the stars, Andrew. The, the, the celebrities. The stars. <laughs> they some of them quite a deal of those them live in L.A., don't they? Right. So what are you saying? We'll we'll find uh, well, them there. We'll bump into will them. Will we be seeing? Yeah, will we yeah, be seeing I mean, more of that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, would I would think so. Not to mention Evie Lynch. I'm sure they'll build her like a penthouse or something in the uh, in, in Hogwarts, Hogwarts Castle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if she were to ask. But so we know where the park's going to be. Generally, uh, we know kind of what's going to be in it. Um, I mean, do you guys think it was the best idea for the second park to be in L.A. or should it have been elsewhere? That's the key question, isn't it? And my other question I was going to ask you guys was, how does this affect Orlando, though? Because by and large, to me, Los Angeles is a bigger attraction to people who are vacationing or who are coming from overseas than Orlando is. It just has more to offer. You just pointed out a lot of the other theme parks that it has, but there's a lot of other things, I think, that draw people to California on the whole. Don't you agree? Somewhat. I mean, Orlando is the theme park capital of the world. There's no doubt about that. I mean, Disney World is just a monstrosity, and it pummels Disneyland. It's just in in sheer size alone. Um, but yes, there's certainly a ton of compelling things out here for people to do. And uh, I'm sure Universal Orlando is a little peeved about. Yeah, ultimately, it's true. They will lose some business. Uh, you know, some people will decide to go to LA over Orlando, but you know, Universal Hollywood's going to suffer that a little bit too. So yeah, yeah, you're right. I think I, I don't know. I can only see this as kind of a positive thing to kind of spread uh, people out. I mean, hey, look, it's it's another opportunity for you know butterbeer, butterbeer on two coasts now instead of just one. You know, in the real world. So I'm happy that that Hogwarts is duplicating. Uh, that that the magic of Harry Potter is spreading, um, but also it might it might actually take the lines down just a little bit in in you know Florida, especially over summer, which actually may help. Things. Yeah, that could be nice. To, to answer your mm-hmm. question, though, I'm sorry I directed off of it, but I I think that in Los Angeles, the problem that a lot of people are going to have is that now you have two Potter theme parks. In the United States, you have nothing in the UK and nothing in the rest of the world as it stands right now. You have the studio tour coming to uh, the UK in March of next year, but that doesn't provide, I, th- I think, the... It's not the same. I mean, it's it's different experience than what the theme park uh, is going to provide. And so I'm wondering if there are plans for that down the road. I know there was a couple of other countries discussed where there are already universal parks about adding uh, the Wizarding World there as well in the future uh, because it yeah. doesn't seem like they're going to stop uh, at just Los Angeles. But I think UK-based fans are starting to get a little aggravated that nothing is being done in their country. Yeah. I mean... Um, 
at the risk of sounding ignorant, I don't really think that theme parks are that big overseas. I mean, America, right. short short of Japan, um, you know, theme parks, roller coasters. I, I it just it just seems like the emphasis has been on the United States uh, for a very very long time uh, to for for those kinds of attractions. And uh, you know, with the new park coming to LA, it will be a a quick flight over the water, quick fifteen-hour flight over the water from <laughs> Japan. So maybe that, maybe actually having it on the other coast, because you said it is closer to Hawaii, it is closer to Australia, it is closer to Japan, New Zealand, well, and Fiji. I'm not trying to be the the U.S. ambassador for British theme parks here, but mm-hmm. I, I'm just noticing things that we're seeing: people making comments, Facebook, well, and Twitter, you- all these places. And if you look at the sheer success of theme parks around the world, America owns owns it. <laughs> um, they are just they that people come to America for theme parks. If they want to go somewhere in the world for theme parks, chances are they will go to America. There's the most stuff here. Simple as that. And then thanks to Disney and to some extent Universal and those other ones. So here's a question I had because we all know this to be true, and this is kind of I guess it'll transition into talking about Florida, but. Florida has just seemed to be consistently overwhelmed by the success of their Potter Park um, since since day one. I mean, they 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 had butterbeer mugs that were supposed to last two years, and they lasted one week, uh, which is why they had to go to like the different style mugs, and you know all that stuff. The merchandise, everything has just you know their quarter profits that they posted all way above their expectations. So. In doing this in L.A., is it saying that Universal Studios Hollywood needs the money? Is it kind of a sure bet instead of doing something original? Or, you know, what do you guys... It's a sure bet. That's what it is. Right. I mean, uh, uh, some Universal exec um, last week called... Uh, Harry Potter, the Wizarding World in Orlando, a reset mechanism, as in they add it to the park and it revitalizes the park. And so that's what they want to do here. I mean, it's just they're just printing money every time they they produce one of these <laughs> new parks. However, they do need to move fast. I mean, you know, one of the other things we haven't talked about yet is the opening date of this park. And it's supposed to be somewhere between 2015 and 2016. And that's kind of a long way away. And there's not movies to keep people excited. So it's like, you know, will the excitement be there? I mean, I've been wondering, am I am I going to be living in L.A. in four or five years? That's true. I mean, it's just su- such a long time from now. I don't know where my life's going to be. Yeah, and you also, you asked me this question. I think it's an important one to bring up. What's the state of these websites going to be Yeah. in that time frame? Because time. not to say that the sites aren't going to be around, but aren't they gonna, are they going to be as active and involved as... 2011. Yeah. And I've been trying to think of an example to relate this to, like how time just passes and, but I really can't. I mean, I guess, I guess what you can say is that, uh, for example, um, Disneyland, they reopened a classic Star Wars ride called Star Tours. They redid it, um, inside and out digitally, the, the storyline and everything. When they reopened it, it was a huge opening all over again. I mean, Star Wars stars were there. Some of the biggest fans were there, camped out hours ahead of time so you know i think i think they can hold their popularity and people are really drawn to being to living in these stories you know what they stared at on screen for so long finally they can actually be inside and And that reminds me speaking of star wars reminds me of episode one you know there you have it it was 25 26 years since the you know return of the jedi when episode one came out and the buzz just kind of kept getting bigger I belonged mm-hmm. to, like, a Star Wars uh, fan club or something when I was in, like, third grade, and I got, like, these updates on the filming of Episode One. But it was huge. It was absolutely huge, and, and the fans are just waiting for it. I, I think it would be smart in closing for me about this Hollywood park if they do do it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe if they still have the same rides, fine, but change something big like the layout, you know, like the direction or – Yeah, I bet you know, it'll don't... be adjusted slightly in that regard. Yeah. And and just kind of definitely make it more of an open space, too, as well, you know, because I, I think one of the things Florida lacks is, um, you know, a really solid outdoor eating area. 
you know, something that, or, or even like a common area, because everybody around you is always going to a specific place, and there's mm-hmm. not really much time to kind of sit down and take it in. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Well, I, I mean, I think to some extent it will stay the same in many regards because they like that perspective of how where you enter near Hogwarts Express in Orlando and you see Hogwarts in the distance and below that is the buildings of Hogsmeade. You know, it's a beautiful entrance. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree it should be mixed up somewhat. Well, that's a good tie-in to the Orlando expansion, which we should touch on a little bit more because there's yeah. been a- uh, more information than just it's going to expand. There's been a lot of rumors as to what exactly the Universal Executives are going to do. And you talked about walking in to Hogsmeade and seeing the Hogwarts Express right there. And one of the things that they were talking about in a few of these articles was tying the old Universal Park uh, in Orlando to the Islands of Adventure via the Hogwarts Express. Mm-hmm. I, and you know I've been a big fan of them knocking out the uh, the Poseidon's Fury ride, which is right out front of the Hogwarts Express and that stuff, because it just seems outdated. But I mean, this new rumor pretty much blew my mind. Um, you know, so they 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 announced a few days ago that they are going to remove the Jaws ride at Universal Studios. That's not the same park that the Wizarding World is in. And then just a couple days later, when they made this Wizarding World Los Angeles announcement, they also said, oh, yeah, and also Wizarding World Orlando is going to um, expand great, a significant expansion. And there's these rumors that are very strong. I've heard from multiple people, this Screenscape site and a couple of these employees who work there, that this is true. They're going to be knocking out the Jaws ride and building the London side of Harry Potter. And... The coolest part of it all is that it would be the two parks would be connected by Hogwarts Express. Wow. Yeah, and it's it's about a half a half a mile distance between the two parks, between between the Wizarding World and where Jaws is right now. Um so that could be a nice little trip. I, I imagine the train would be moving slowly. But the other angle to this and where Universal is brilliant and where it may piss off a lot of people is that you would have to have two park tickets to get into both parks. You would have to be have a two park ticket to ride both to ride the train. It's true, but at the same time, the two park ticket is really the only way to get your money's worth, in my opinion. These yeah, I mean, days with with yeah. tickets, you know, you need the multi day pass, multi park pass, yeah. to really even uh, justify spending a hundred dollars to get in. No, I agree with you, but I've seen a lot of comments where people are saying, "I cannot believe how could they do this and build two <laughs> separate parks, and we're going to well, have to we're well, be forced to." This is buy exactly two park tickets. what you were talking about before with revitalizing Orlando, revitalizing Los Angeles. That Universal Studios park is about as outdated as it comes with respect to rides, and I think what this will do is it will help pick things up in that particular park. Yeah, absolutely. You know, on that exact topic, when I was in the regular Universal Park just a couple of weeks during the um, during the home entertainment celebration, I went in to the Universal, the regular park, Universal Studios, to kind of look around. I was actually shopping for Christmas. Um, don't tell my mother. And uh, <laughs> I noticed actually that the main gift shop when you when you walk in, there's this huge gift shop. There was Harry Potter merchandise quite a bit of Harry Potter merchandise in the regular Universal Park, so, which so that's a currently tip there's... for people, actually, who don't want to wait <laughs> online in the yeah. Wizarding World. Yeah. that's Well, it's a tip, but also the thing of it is, is my reaction was negative. It was, what is this Harry Potter stuff doing in the regular Universal thing? Because without a ride to justify it, without something to anchor it in the Universal's regular park, clearly and, and, and disgustingly, that's where the money is going. But so yeah, but remember, Universal's I mean, they, just like, one in the oh, airport, people like Harry too. Potter stuff. Yeah, exactly. Let's put a, that's what I was just going to say. That's a little different. That's a Universal store. Like, this is in the regular park. It's like, hey, nothing in this regular Universal park is worth selling, uh, worth this shelf space. You know, due to all this demand for Potter stuff, we're going to put extra stuff over here. You may not even be, have a ticket to see the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, but now you can buy a little Norbert that comes out of its egg like a puppet. And all these, you know, brooms and shirts and wigs and skirts and, and, and sweaters. I, I just, I, I was just, I was a little upset because there was no Hogwarts to back it up in the park. But, and, and that's already there. 
But uh, if they have this sort of muggle side of of the world, I'm super excited for it. Yeah, and it kind of makes sense to have the two separated in terms of realism. Like, so there is a little journey. And the Hogwarts Express is obviously perfect because, I mean, let's say they build Platform 9 and 3 quarters. Like, that would be really cool at, um, in, at the, in the jaw, on the Jaws side. Um yeah, it's it's a cool idea. Now, how about some of these rides? I mean, one of the ones that was rumored and we've talked about before is the the one in Gringotts um or something related to Diagon Alley. Yeah, I guess it really didn't make much sense that they would do a Gringotts ride if they only really had Hogsmeade as a setting. You know? Yeah. They would need sort of the Diagon Alley setting to be able to do the Gringotts guys coaster. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So that's this idea I love. Yeah, you know, the more I think about this too, just because like imagine stepping out of the existing Wizarding World and then five feet later you're in Diagon Alley. Like it just wouldn't really feel right. I don't right. think. Right. But to take a train or to because the other thing is that the Jaws ride is in the far, you know, back right of the I want to say back I don't know the cardinal directions. It's the back right end of the of the corner of the park. Of the mm-hmm. regular park, mm-hmm. and the park is to the right of the uni- the Universal uh, Islands of Adventure is on the left, and and the Wizarding World is in the back left of that park. So it's the farthest possible distance, the furthest possible distance from the park entrance, and also from each of you know from each other. If they were to build it where the Jaws yeah. right is, yeah, it's which kind is of really um, cool. It would have to go backstage for a good. You know, the whole thing, the train ride would have to be backstage. And they'd also have to knock out a lot of buildings backstage because unless it's going to go above them. But then I think I think they're going to do some sort of tunnel where, you know, you, you obviously don't want to be riding the Hogwarts Express through the back area of Universal <laughs> uh, where there's people walking around in costumes with no heads on. Um, so I think they would do some sort of tunnel. And, and then I, have it be like a video thing. Yeah, because I was thinking in Disney, in Disney, when you ride the train, in some parts you go through these tunnels and you see these um sort of like stage areas, and like you go through a dinosaur world and you see all these dinosaurs and stuff, and you're passing by them. Oh, cool! So I think it could be something like that, maybe. Um, yeah, not, obviously not thinking, with dinosaurs. But no, here I was thinking they would have to like terraform the back lot to like get it to look like the viaduct and things like that. But you're right; if they just have it like a tunnel, but like maybe instead of the windows of the train, it's like a video screen or something that yeah. shows you like the English countryside. That would be yeah, a that great could be solution. cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, is it my understanding that how they're going to lay this out is at least in concept for right now? You would have London, and you would have the opportunity to go into an area that would take you to platform nine and three quarters. You'd get on the Hogwarts Express, and then you'd also have, off of London, the entrance to the Leaky Cauldron, and somewhere in there would lead you out to Diagon Alley and, I guess, Gringotts and where the ride would be. Is that kind of what people are thinking about, or am I just making this all up in my head? I really wonder. I wonder how much of it would be Muggle London, you know, because we're talking about Diagon Alley, and that's actually, you know, still magical. You know, I'm I'm wondering how much of the park would be sort of like a Charing Cross Road or, you know, any of those kind of famous London. Because I think when you're heading towards Jaws, there's the Mummy ride. And the Mummy is obviously, as a film, is set in London, in, in, in Britain. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that those buildings, and, it, you know, I don't really remember if they're like, if they look British at all. Or if there's like cobbled streets or anything. But... You know, they could theme, they could really theme that whole area to look more British. And then by the time you get to the park or the, the Harry Potter side of things, yeah, even I'm, if it's. I'm just reading like this it, here. It says Phase two of the Wizarding World would include a new section of the park to take over where the Jaws and Amity, or Amity portion, I guess Amity Bill Horror, right? Hmm. What are you talking about? Um, portion recently closed down. Uh, the rumor plans uh, include a reproduction of London, which would house Diagon Alley. A true location for Ollivander's wand shop, Gringotts Bank with an amazing new roller coaster, cart ride, and the Leaky Cauldron. Additionally, they would add platform nine and three quarters where patrons would pass through the Muggle side and be whisked away to Hogsmeade Station via an actual train ride on the Hogwarts Express. So we're talking about this is two massive rides. work. <laughs> we're yeah, talking about two rides huge. though. Two rides because we have the Gringotts ride, which is the only one they'd really have to develop hard, think hard to develop. Because they've got to build it like underground or in the wall or whatever they do, however they do it. But then the train ride, 
which would work. But I think they could actually get away with only adding two more rides, you know? Yeah, no, But just I have agree. it be a nice themed area with, obviously, the uh, Leaky Cauldron to eat at. And all the shops in Diagon Alley. Right, you see dollar signs in those merchandise shops. Yeah, of course. And I think they would move. I think they would move Ollivanders to the London side, um, oh, and then yeah. maybe put something else there, or just expand. Probably just expand that store that's there. Well, they said a true location. I think they just mean a bigger store because those, yeah. you know, that those waits for the Ollivanders and the in the Hogsmeade is three or four hours. You know, on bad days. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they could just do a second one. I guess that would certainly help alleviate the the weight or just redesign Ollivanders completely in the London side and, and make like two or three Ollivanders but obviously you don't see all two or three of them you just go into one entrance and you're directed into room one two or three you know right um yeah so a lot of big rumors going on it's again you know 2014 we I think the Wall Street Journal report said 2015, and then the LA Times said 2014. And then I saw a report today saying 2015, 2016. So a lot of this stuff is very... Is this for you know, the expansion or for the LA park? Both, both. I th- I heard the expansion was 2014, um, which I guess could make a little more sense because, I mean, they already know what... Well, they know what they're closing at both I was parts. just trying to remember how fast it took the Orlando to park do it to the develop. First time? Because I thought we were looking at a further timeline, and it actually ended up being created and opened a lot sooner. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure. It was announced May 31st, 2007. I thought so, right before the last film. It was opened yeah. in the spring of 2010, right? Yeah, but, but it was like June, right? And it was like late June. So, so that's just over three years. Three years so that's after not the bad, actually. That that was pretty quick, yeah. That would put it into the fourteen fifteen range. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. It, for the expansion, obviously, it depends how much work they would need to do and how fast they started. Yeah, I mean, I think the expansion probably would have been a lot easier if they were if they weren't doing it over at Universal Studios. Um, you and think I mean, so? bu- well, yeah, just because. Well, I mean, I mean, just because the sheer size of it. I mean, they're gonna have to yeah. add so much. They got to build that entire. They they have to take out a tremendous amount of stuff to make room for the Hogwarts Express or like that. I have I that's going to be like an amazing construction feat that they're going to pull off. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm sure I'm sure that the merchandise that they've sold thus far has already paid for this addition to the park and the next two. Yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty spectacular. Well, we got some comments from those who follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash MuggleCast. Um, Brady Boy writes, I live on the East Coast, won't impact me much, although the crowds will be much better in Florida when I go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, spirit. maybe. I'm I'm not sold that this is going to alleviate the crowds, but... Well, I remember, just as we were discussing, you have a few years before those crowds lessen in Orlando. <laughs> go down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thomas Schollen wrote, Stoked, an HP theme park within a couple hours of San Diego, and it won't cost an arm and a leg to go. Once I'm in the park is another story. Oh, because he's going to be spending a lot of money. Taylor Whaler 18 said, looking forward to it. Stings said, I hope they have unique experiences at each park in LA is not a carbon copy of Orlando. The Demon wrote, so excited. Hogwarts will be a 30-minute drive instead of a five-hour flight. Went to Wizarding World Orlando once. Can't wait to see how it compares. Um, Snay, Snail Savvy wrote, my first thoughts were there can only be Hogwarts. I guess she meant one Hogwarts. But I will still be going. I wish the UK would get a theme park instead. And finally, Maria G- Gonzalez says, I couldn't be happier about not having to travel 3,000 miles to go to the Wizarding World. So see, guys, lots of locals here are very thrilled about cool. about this. Well, the other thing, uh, during the event today, were they passing out butterbeer? Because I saw... Oh, was yeah. It your, this your is the pictures, best part. They had the costumes, right? Yeah, they had the costumes. When I wanted to take a picture of one of them, but I felt like it was kind of creepy, so I decided not to. Uh, but yeah, at the end, and and when they invited me to, media to it, they called it a, a toast to the Wizarding World, a butterbeer toast to the Wizarding World. You know, they didn't really want to announce it. Um, but they brought out butterbeer at the end. And I have to say, it was so nice to have these fresh butterbeers. You know, they look just like, you know, they came out 
of the three broomsticks in Orlando. Just have them here in Los Angeles. I was so thrilled to see so that. Those, so though that butterbeer didn't sit like on a plane or a train for like 30 hours. No, I think hours. they made it there. I think they made it there in the park. And, Which is you know, dangerous. I, I hate I would the sto- hate- Yeah. Go ahead. I would hate to be the courier with that recipe or something carrying it across yeah. you know, to the other side of the, the coast because, you know, spies would want that, you know. <laughs> right. But I have to say, and I hate to put a damper on this, but, and, and this is not just me, this is two other people. We were all in agreement that the butterbeer tasted different. Now, it's the same cup, oh. it's the same thro- froth, but something about the soda, it was off. And I, I jokingly suggested maybe it's the L.A. water. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know if that's actually what the issue is. So it was off. Hmm. Yeah, it was off. Ben, Ben, I brought that up to Ben earlier tonight. He suggested, well, maybe it's because in Orlando you're sweating so much that it just, it just tastes so much more refreshing. Whereas here, <laughs> you're, poor, poor Ben, your body's okay. So he's had a rough go of things in Florida. Anyway, so, you know, over the next couple of years, we'll continue to update you on this. Hopefully, sooner rather than later, we'll see at least some concept <laughs> art about either the exa- expansion or, or Wizarding World LA. I mean, because when they announced Wizarding World Orlando back in 2007, we got concept art right from the beginning. So Yeah, yeah that's true. we see some LA stuff soon. Maybe. By the, the way, cast. J.K. Rowling commented on this. Ooh. In the press release, she said, I'm delighted that the Wizarding World of Harry Potter has been so popular with fans since the opening in Orlando last year, and I am sure that the teams at Universal and Warner Brothers <laughs> will bring their expertise and attention to detail to Hollywood to make this new experience equally as exciting. P.S. Sorry, Micah, about Pottermore. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she included that right in a whole press yeah, release. I thought that was nice. I guess no, she's another way to get to. Yeah. No, she knows. <laughs> Uh, okay but, um, guys yeah what's jk rowling doing huh i guess Seriously. cleaning another theme park maybe this is what she's been busy with just yeah, kidding she could write up update her twitter seriously yeah uh well don't forget to visit mugglecast.com it has all the information you need about this show yes of course we have another episode this month it is going to be our year in review show and also our third or fourth annual muggle casties and this is of course where we give you a variety of categories you know best uh you know the jk rowling award award very very secretive yeah uh, most shocking story, all these different categories related to Harry Potter. And we're going to be doing the polls online this year. And then we will announce the winners on the show. And, uh, you know, it'll be year in review and that'll be out in a couple of weeks. And that'll be it for 2011. Crazy. Right. Onward, onward think, to 2012. I think that will put us at close to 30 episodes for the year. So that's not bad. And it really isn't bad. Okay, I'm just looking at this right now. The first annual Muggle Casties were in 2008. So this will be the oh. fourth. Whoa. I thought so. Two Very nice. Two, uh, oh, we'll, have to, cool. uh, we'll have to copy those old uh, categories and uh, see yes. if we can work some new ones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, well, from Hyperbowl.com, I'm Andrew Sims. From MuggleNet.com, I'm Eric Skull. And I'm Mike Tannenbaum. We'll see you next time for episode 248. Live seven. from the Wizarding seven, World. 247. 247. Live from the Wizarding World, California. See you in four years. Yes. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.